I am Anil Kumar. Welcome to my YouTube channel and the website Global Math Institute. We are trying to organize 20,000 videos which are there on YouTube on this website Global Math Institute to give you an excellent experience of watching some brilliant videos in proper sequence. Now in this series I am going to add up a new series which will be well organized for students looking forward for admissions to great universities. So one of the very important topic is integration which many students find very difficult. For any entrance examination to American universities or British universities or IITs in India, the entrance test exams will definitely have few questions on integrals. We'll understand in simple steps how to tackle such questions and answer them correctly. So in this series, if you watch the videos in a sequence, you will understand the complete process. As you go through this process, make a note of all the integrals which you have solved as they help you in moving forward. Now here in this video, we'll focus on the type of integrals where the numerator is derivative of the denominator itself. And if that is the case, then the integral is ln absolute value of the function plus c. Now these are indefinite integrals, right? So we have written here that the integral of f prime x over f of x dx is equal to ln absolute value of f of x plus c. Let us uh, prove it. And then we are going to utilize this particular theorem in solving many questions. So here is a proof for the same, right? So we are trying to prove that the integral of the derivative of f of x over f of x dx is basically equal to ln absolute value of f of x plus c. Now it makes sense to have absolute value since logarithms are only defined for the values greater than zero, right? So that makes sense, correct? So that ensures that whatever is there, the value of the function, it is always greater than zero, right? Okay. We need to prove that the integral of f dash x over f of x dx is equal to ln absolute value of the function itself plus c. We'll follow a very easy and simple method of substitution here. Now if I substitute t equals to f of x, in that case differentiating both sides we get d of t is derivative of f of x dx. Well, clearly, you can now see that we can rewrite our integral in terms of t, right? So, so the integral which we're thinking of integrating, which is integral of f dash x dx over f of x can now be written as now f of x dx is dt, right? So it could be written as 1 over t dt. Is that clear to you? And you know, integral of 1 over t is ln t, right? So this integral is ln absolute value of t plus c. t, let us substitute back f of x for this. So we get ln absolute value of f of x plus c. So that is how we can easily prove this particular theorem that if you notice that the numerator is derivative of the denominator, then straight away you can write down the answer, just as we have seen here. Perfect. Now here are six examples. Now these examples are commonly seen in multiple choice test papers, right? So, so they are normally seen in multiple choice test papers. As you can understand, you can always answer these questions just by inspection. Well, 
For example, if you look into the very first case, derivative of the denominator is what? x square minus x plus 5, if you differentiate, you get 2x minus 1, which is a numerator. And therefore, the integral 2x minus 1 divided by x square minus 5 plus 5 dx is ln x square minus x plus 5 absolute value plus c. Perfect. Take a moment to answer all these questions. Well, always it is not straightforward. Here, the derivative is not x cubed. It is 4 times x cubed. So sometimes you may have to rearrange or do some algebraic operation to get the answer. However, it shouldn't take you more than two or three steps. Now let's practice solving these questions and get ready for slightly difficult questions on the same topic. So now I'm going to take up solution for two first two questions, right? So let's solve these two. The very first one, let's say we need to find the integral of this particular function, which is 2x minus 1 over x square minus x plus 5 dx. So we are assuming i to be the integral. We'll make a substitution. t equals to x square minus x plus 5. Differentiating, we get d of t equals to 2x minus 1, right? dx. Now clearly, we could write our integral as equal to numerator is dt, right? 2x minus 1 dx is dt. And 1 over x square minus x plus 5 can be written as 1 over t, right? So it is 1 over t dt, which we can write as ln absolute value of t plus c. You have to always substitute the value of t back to get the right answer. So it's absolute value of x squared minus x plus 5 plus c. Is that clear to you? Now by inspection, you must have got the same answer. Perfect. Now let's do the next one. We need to integrate x cubed over x to the power of 4 plus 1 d of x. Now let's say i is the integral for x cubed over x to the power of 4 plus 1 dx. If I substitute t as equal to x to the power of 4 plus 1, what is dt equals to? Well, dt is 4x cubed. Not dt is 4x cubed, not just x cubed. So that means what we should do here, uh, sorry, dt is 4x cubed dx, right? So what we should do here is slightly modify the question. So we can write that our integral is basically equal to we can multiply and divide by 4, right? We could do that. Or you could think about x cubed dx as 1 over 4 of dt, right? So you could also see it like this. From here, you could also see that 1 fourth of dt is equal to x cubed dx. So we can make this substitution for x cubed dx. Does it make sense to you, right? So we'll do that. So we'll write this as first 1 over x to the power of 4 plus 1 can be written as 1 over t, right? And then we are writing this as 1 over 4 dt. Is that clear to you? Correct? And this integral is definitely equal to 1 fourth of ln absolute value of t plus c. So we get our result that this integral is definitely equal to 1 fourth of ln absolute value of x to the power of 4 plus 1 plus c. Clear? So that is how we are going to answer such questions. Now let's take part c and d. Part c and d, we have trigonometric functions. I would like you to pause the video, think about it, and then check with my solution. c, you need to integrate tan x dx. Well, we need the integration of tan x, perfect? Tan x can be written as sin x over cosine x. Now, what is the derivative of cos x? Minus sin x. So, you got it. The numerator in this case is definitely a derivative of the denominator. 
So if I substitute t equals to cos x, then d of t is equals to minus sin x dx. We can make this substitution. So we get this integral as equal to integral of minus 1 over t dt, right? So we substituted cos x with t and then we got sin x dx as minus dt, right? So I wrote minus here, correct? So that is as good as writing minus integral of 1 over t dt. So that gives you the integral as minus ln absolute value of t or minus ln absolute value of t is cosine x, right? Cos x plus c. I can write plus c here also. Perfect. Now this negative really means cos to the power of minus 1, right? So we could also write this answer as the integral equals to ln of absolute value of 1 over cos x, right? So which is secant x plus c. So that becomes the solution for this particular question. Clear? So the integral of tan x is ln absolute value of secant x plus c. Now on the same basis, I'd like you to pause the video and answer the next one. We can now write this as integral of cos x over sin x, correct? That is cotangent x dx. We'll substitute t as equal to sin x. So that means dt is cos x dx, right? So we can, cos x dx can be written as dt. So we get integral i is 1 over t dt, which is equal to ln absolute value of t plus c. And that is clearly equal to ln absolute value of sin x. plus c. Correct? So that is how we can actually find the integral of cotangent x. So I hope the steps are absolutely clear. Right? Now next two examples I've taken with a variation. We've taken an exponential function and uh, a trigonometric function where you need to do a little bit of uh, simplification. So now we have integral of e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x divided by e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x dx. Now, if I substitute t equals to e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x, we know the derivative will be what? e to the power of x minus e to the power of minus x dx, correct? Which is the numerator. Perfect. And therefore, we can write integral i is equal to integral of the numerator is the derivative of the denominator and therefore we can use our rule, right? So we get 1 over t dt. So this is equal to ln absolute value of t plus c. So we can write down that the integral i is equal to ln absolute value of e to the power of x plus e to the power of minus x dx. Perfect. So that is how you can solve this particular question. Now the last question here is slightly more tricky. If you see derivative of tan x secant square x directly, we cannot see the result. However, if we simplify this, we can actually uh, write our integral in the form of 1 minus sin x over cos x, right? Let's replace tan x with sin x over cos x. Then see what do we get. Now, so what we get here is, let's say integral i is equal to cos x minus sin x over, we'll multiply both numerator and denominator by cosine x, cos x plus sin x. Now, do you observe that the 
derivative of the denominator is indeed the numerator, right? So our substitution can work. If t is equals to cos x plus sin x, in that case dt will be equal to minus sin x plus cos x dx. So that is what we have in the numerator. Perfect. And therefore, we can write down the integral as 1 over t dt, which is equal to ln absolute value of t plus c. So we can write this integral as ln absolute value of cos x plus sin x plus c. Is that clear to you? So in all these examples, what we observed is that the derivative of the denominator was the numerator, correct? So, so we'll just make a note of this. If derivative of the denominator is numerator, then apply this theorem. Is that clear, right? Which means this theorem. Perfect. So it is excellent theorem to remember and a very easy way to answer many questions. You'll be surprised that many questions in a multiple choice test paper on integration are something like this which you can really answer with inspection or after some calculations or simplification as we did in the last case. Now we'll take up another set of videos where we'll apply the same strategy. However, slightly more simplification will be required to see that the denominator's derivative is the numerator. I hope you're finding this series interesting and useful. Feel free to write your comments, share your views and your suggestions so that we could make it important and useful for you. Thanks for your time and all the best.